both serve in a brethren church and we love so much our church and we love so much our city and our country and we love a lot youth. Our flag is uh, a simple flag with this eagle that represents being uh, free, having this freedom for, from uh, the occupy, occupations from the other countries that uh, you maybe listen uh, what Ermal and Henry were sharing in the morning. And uh, this is our family. So we have two little boys, almost six and almost three years old, and these two beautiful and wonderful girls that came to be part of our family almost seven years ago when they were uh, almost 16 years old, but still in their 15, when their mom died from cancer. And they first came to our youth ministry that me and my husband, Armal, we, we lead through years this ministry. It was a friend of them, a classmate. She was, um, she, she came to faith, she came to Christ, and she was very interested to help these young girls, these friends, and she invited them to come to our youth ministry. And when we heard their story, um, our heart was so touched and we asked God what you want us to do with these girls. Because uh, we can see that they were alone, because their dad wasn't in their life. Their parents were divorced before they were born again. And her mom, their mom, had to raise them alone in a such difficult and struggles through, through her life. And then she died. Um, it has been always in my heart, since I was a young girl, to help children and women. I have been uh, watching, like, I saw a lot of abuse and violence toward the women and children when I was raising when in my home city. And I had this pain into my heart and I wanted to do something to help these girls, these women and these children. So I was wondering what I'm going to do into, in my life. And I wanted first to be a judge to fight the injustice to put to jail all these men or whoever is attacking these girls, women and children. But I ended up to be a social worker because when I had to choose my studies, the program was the same, studying for law or studying for social work. So it was very interesting for me and I, got, and I went to see what is new in this social work that I didn't heard before. And I find myself registering my name, putting my name to the application to both of the departments. And then I felt very uh, like in connect with, uh, with this new area. And so I, choosing to study for social work, I met a friend, we were classmates and she was a Christian born again. And one day when I was doing and going through my crisis in my life, like, like studying sociology and philosophy and law and history and all this stuff that, uh, tra that has to be trained as a social worker, I, made, I, I became very confused with my faith that I come from a Catholic background that I heard about Christ, but never had that personal relationship until one day she decided to invite me, this friend, and I decided to go to her church. And so I started to read the Bible and see who is this Jesus? Who is this Christ that 
all the world talk about him, the history turned because of him. And I saw that he was so much more than me or whoever caring for these children, these girls and these women that my heart was crying for. So then I accepted him, I made him, I accepted him as my savior and I promised him that I will do whatever you want me to do, but in my heart is to do something for the women and children in my country. And since then, in my heart was part, except this, was uh, my involvement then was more in youth ministry. So this is a picture of the youth ministry in our home church. Uh, we have, they are attending more than 30 usually. And uh, we do a lot of things with them, especially disciple, Bible studying, and training them for life skills, to become more skilled and to see themselves part of their country and investing their life in their country. We do open our home too. God has blessed us with uh, with a nice house and we open our house to invite them and to see uh, how living out Jesus can be to see a model that as a first generation we are trying to build a good model in Jesus model and we do train them as when we see uh, a potential for leading or for um, uh, for making a step in the ministries or in their life, uh, we do train them to become Jesus disciples. These are some pictures that to bring you maybe a little taste what we do in our home church. Um, so part of training them has been training them to use arts and different skills or talents. And part of that, as you see in, in, the, in this picture, uh, I have tried through lately to train them uh, on using the puppets. So hopefully we can build where we can have someday a puppet theater. Um, and uh, use them to go into schools that we are not allowed yet, but we are uh, strongly praying that God will open doors in, in the schools. And, um, and we can use this training to bring the gospel to the people, especially to the young generation, as much as we can in any manner that our uh, our state can allow or uh, our law can give us space or freedom. And I want to introduce these six young adults, <laughs> six young um, girls and boys that have put their faith in Jesus and they are so willing to lead a ministry in the church and they are so willing to make a difference in their generation, in their society, in, the, in their uh, closed friendship and uh, they have been part of an internship in the church and they are, we are so such a big blessing for our church and for other churches, in, especially in south of Albania. Um, uh, organizing and working hard through camps, through youth camps and children camps. And this is another picture that uh, we, we uh, from a camp uh, for a uh, leadership training camp. We do have some different group ages for to reach out uh, through uh, all the generations uh, outside in the city, outside the church. And one is Part of that is um, children's ministry. During the 
uh, especially during the pandemic time. So everything was shut down and we were so skeptic and pessimist or some of some of us and uh, especially the children's ministry was shut and the leaders that were leading that time they got so discouraged and they didn't want anymore to to do to to keep it going so in that time I, um, we tried to build more relationships in the church and between each other and especially in, in leadership. Those women, girls, boys and men that were leading somehow one of the ministries. And that was very uh, important because we got inspired uh, listening to each other how God, how good has been God in, in our personal life, in inspiring each one of us how to reach out someday more people. Because when, you, when we struggle more, we seek more for God. And that way we came up to a kind of a training uh, group with women and girls that were leading somehow or stepping or wanting to step in one of the ministries. And we studied a lot the model of Jesus, like how he leads, how he did ministry, how he discipled his disciples. And we came out with this idea to build some foundations. So can we take his foundations and to, to put in our living, daily living life and, in our, uh, in, in, and let him inspire us. So praying a lot, putting these foundations in focus, Jesus model in fo focusing our eyes in toward Jesus, then the Holy Spirit inspired all the, all the group to come along together and help and get inspired and support each other to start again the young ministry and, not, and not, never stop that in God's willing and then see how the, we can be connected with each other. It doesn't matter in what ministry you are leading or you are serving, but we are in, this, in the same body and we are the church and we want to be together not in a separate boat but all together in one boat and so we started with camps and with activities thanks god he has blessed us with a beautiful city and we are so free to go out and do a lot of outreach and nobody says uh, or not, nobody stops us so we profit from this and just go and do what God wants us to lead how God wants us uh, to lead our steps and then we have the teen uh, the pre-teenagers ministry that uh, the the group of the young people that I shared in the picture before that were part of the internship they took over and now they are leading themselves and they are blessing these children and their families and the church and the city through their humbleness and their heart to serve god and 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 be be ready to get more trained and equipped and we do still try to do camps, especially uh, every, every two summers we try to do camps for evangelism. So we can reach more, we can reach out more of their, like of our young people that still are, that are already in our group and uh, to bring, to give them opportunity to, to bring their friends. And then we do we sometimes, so one year we do evangelism and one year we do training or disciple or disciple camp, discipleship camps. Very close to my heart is the women's ministry, the ladies' ministry. 
And God has blessed us with a lot of women and girls. And uh, we try to, to have a, a ladies' meeting every once a month. And we, we, we want to... We, we want to give a chance and an opportunity to give opportunity to challenge their friends and their co-workers and their families uh, to come time after time in our events or activities that are uh, specially in particular organized for the women, for female. And part, a part of that we do Bible studies for all those women and girls that are very interested to, to go deep in the Word and to, to help themselves grow in the Word. And, and then part, a part of that, we do training for them how to counsel each other, how to use the Bible to counsel other ladies, to do some Bible counseling, but very easily and very not it doesn't, it, it doesn't mean to be very professional, but to use the truth of God that as, a, as a medicine. After we have met their needs, we have helped them and support them to make a step ahead, to see more positive their life, and then to bring this medicine to their soul, to accept Jesus, to walk with Jesus, and to trust Him, their life, their children, and the family's life. And here is another picture of all of us together. And thanks God, every year has been an average of around five people coming every year to faith. So we do enjoy, thanks God, we do enjoy a lot of baptism. It's a very special day for the, whole, for the church, for personal, for every individual that put their faith to, the, to Christ and for their families. It's a great opportunity to have their families, to see, to, to listen to their testimony and to see and to know church and to know God. Lately, God has blessed us with a new building that um, has been a great um, a hard work to bring it uh, to the restoration and to, uh, to make it a, a, a good place to, that we can meet and we can organize the structure differently and to think and to get more inspired how to reach out more for uh, outside the city. And uh, it was a, a big event opening that new building and a team from America came to bless us, a team of uh, um, doctors, medical team, came to bless us with a clinic and we can we could see every every day more than 200 people coming showing themselves and asking for help and get and getting some help from 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 the team and now uh, the 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 state of church is uh, building a good follow up plan what we are going to do with these people and how we're going to share the gospel and how we're going to care for these people and how we're going to expand more uh, the gospel. And part of that plan was to get in contact with the doctors in the city. So we organized a nice evening for them to come and, and meet with this medical team and uh, make some contact and some, some connection and uh, let, let them know who is the Church of Christ and who, we, who are we and what is on our heart for our, for our city and for our nation. It was such a big blessing because lots of doctors came and meet with these 
American doctors and shared some good principles and some experiences and get so inspired and they are still in contact with the church. And to end this presentation, I want to share a little story for uh, from this girl called Maggie, the, the girl in between the girl in between is Megvana, is called Megvana. And uh, she comes from a Christian family. She was part of our camps during the summer youth camps. And uh, for the first camp, she was so touched from the word and for what we has been sharing there. And uh, she understood that she was so far away from God. And then the next year, she was asking us all the year, where are we going to do the, the next camp? Where are we going to do the next camp? And because she wanted to invite uh, a friend, a special friend for her. The guy in your right has been bullied for five or more years from Magvana. And in the first camp she came, because she was touched, she was uh, so repented and she wanted to bring Anton, her friend. And, but before that, she went to him and asked for forgiveness. And he couldn't believe and uh, he didn't want to come to the camp. But then her sis his sister came along and encouraged him, why we don't go to camp? And so, so, and then both three, three of them came to the, the other camp and they were so, like their, their relationship then built such in a natural and holistic way that only Jesus can build that. And now she's reading the Bible with them, she's studying the Bible with them, and she's showing re what is that real repentance when you come to Jesus. You can change yourself, you can change your friends, and you can change the world. So we keep this focus in our heart and in our eyes that through Jesus we can change our nation and we can change our world in Albania and we and for us is wherever they go this young this youth wherever they go when they accept Jesus and when they put their life in Jesus hands they can give Jesus to everyone more than we do more than I do more than me and Ermal do and if I can share some prayer points, please keep us, remember us, and pray for us. And thank God, praise the Lord for his goodness to our nation and to our country. Thank you.